Good evening, everyone. So last week in the last presentation, we discussed about biology of M. leprae and we discussed in detail the structure of M. leprae cell wall. And we mentioned that that the main constituent that makes this bacterium different from uh, different from other bacteria is the high concentration of mycolic acid. Okay. And utilizing the principle, utilizing this fact that the cell wall is rich in mycolic acid, we have a different stain to stain for M. leprae that we use in laboratory practices. That is known as the zeal Nielsen staining or the modified zeal Nielsen staining. And this stain is what we will learn today how to do it because this is a very important part of the residency and every person, uh, every resident should know how to prepare or how to stain the slide for zeal Nielsen. So in today's, in this week's uh, video, we'll just go through the process of ZN staining and to see what are, uh, what are the steps involved so that whenever they are asking viva or whenever, whenever you need to write a short note on the ZN staining and, and its use in dermatology, we should know what exactly we are talking about. So without much further ado, let's start this week's discussion of Zeal Nielsen staining. So Zeal Nielsen staining is also known as an acid fast stain. We discussed last week that acid fastness is a property of mycobacterium leprae that allows it not to get very easily decolorized when exposed to acid alcohol. Okay, that is why the zeal stain is known as acid fast stain because you utilize it to stain acid fast bacteria. Zeal stain is a differential stain. That means it uh, it uh, stains different structures differently. For example, if you use a stain uh, which colors everything in, in the same color, it will be difficult for it to differentiate the organisms which you want to see. In ZN stain, that being a differential stain, it stains the mycolic acid containing mycobacteria red and the background is blue so that the contrast is increased and we can better identify the bacilli. So if you can see in the picture, the mycobacterium are stained red. While well, the background or the other epithelial cells are stained blue. That is because you would utilize two different stains of different colors to stain each and every different structures. So an example of differential stain is ZN stain. Other example of differential stain is Gram stain. Okay, so that is another example of differential staining. Let's move forward. Now, uh, last week's lecture, we discussed about the acid fastness of the bacilli. Okay, that acid fastness comes from high content of lipids, fatty acids, specifically mycolic acid. So what mycolic acid, acid does is it gives a waxy coating to the bacilli. Okay, a waxy coating and waxy coating repels water. So it's a hydrophobic coating. So we require special stains that can go inside the cell wall and color the cell wall. So the mycolic acid in, in the cell wall of the bacteria is colored using carbol fuchsin. Okay. Now we know that higher alcoholic content in the mycobacterium cell wall is there, specifically mycolic acid and attached compounds. And just go through the last week's video where we discussed that all sorts of different mycolates and mycolic acid salts are there in the bacterial cell wall, the mycobacterium cell wall, and those absorb the carbol fuchsin and keep it together, keep it inside the cell wall and do not allow it to go away when the, when the bacteria is washed with acid alcohol. That is the property acid fastness. Okay. So the vaccine mycolic acid in the cell wall binds to carbon fuchsin and retains it. And this retention of stain is what is known as acid fastness. Are you clear about it? Let's move forward. Now, in order to do an acid uh, ZN staining, these are the minimum materials that you require. So first of all, you require disposable surgical gloves because you are dealing with an infectious material. You are staining for M. leprae. So uh, sterility has to be maintained and protection has to be there. So use disposable surgical gloves. Then you have the prepared slide in which you have made the smear taken from the patient or the sample that you wish to stain. <clears throat> Then you have the first stain, which is carbol fuchsin. Okay, so carbol fuchsin is a red colored stain which will go inside the mycolic acid rich cell wall of the M. leprae and will stay there. Okay, after that, you need a burner to fix the slide. We fix the slide on a flame, gently heating it. 
After that, you require one person as well alcohol to decolorize it. So this is a decolorizing agent. So what it does is it removes the color from the entire slide except mycolic acid rich cell wall of M. leprae. And the concentration changes as per organism. If you are dealing with M. leprae, you want to stain with M. leprae, you use 1% acid alcohol. Now, if you are staining with M uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, then you require a stronger decolorizer because MTB resists decolorization more as compared to M. leprae. So you need a stronger agent. But if you use a stronger decolorizer to stain for M. leprae, it, the stain will get washed off. So you require a weaker, relatively weaker decolorizer. So for M. leprae, we use 1% acid alcohol. And then we have the methylene blue, which is the counter stain. It will stain all other things, all epithelial cells, background as blue. So that the contrast increases and we are better able to identify the bacilli. So the procedure is actually is very simple and if you understand the logic, you will never forget what, what is the process, what are the steps involved, okay? The first is heating and fixing the smear on the, on the slide. For that, you use a Bunsen burner, okay, a Bunsen burner for a gentle flame. Then you stain with the first stain, which is carbon fuchsin, and then you heat the slide. Heating facilitates the penetration of stain in the cell wall. So when you heat, the, mycol the stain penetrates deeper into the cell wall and stays there. But remember, when you are when you are heating the slide in certain stain, there should be only gentle steam on the stain. There should be no boiling. If you boil the stain, then the bacilli will die. You will not get anything in the stain. You will just get fragments. You will never be sure whether they are bacilli or something else. Okay. So only a little amount of steam should come from the stain. After that, use a decolorizing agent. So this 5 to 20 percent sulfuric acid is the initial decolorizer in the uh, in the process described initially. But now, in fact, in nearly all of the labs, what we use is hydrochloric acid diluted with 70 percent alcohol solution. So this is what we use. In fact, if you uh, go to your lab and see what decolorizer they use, you will find it's uh, it's here with 70 percent alcohol solution. The second stain is methylene blue. The full name is lawfulness methylene blue. So this has been asked to me in a viva that what is the name of methylene blue? It's lawfulness methylene blue, which is a counter stain. Counter means it will stain everything else except the bacteria. So it will stain the background with a light bluish hue. It will stain other cells which are not mycolic acid rich blue. Are you clear about it? Let's move forward. Now, let's start the process of making a zeal Nielsen stain slide, okay? First, you clean the sterile slide. In other words, you run it over the flame so that it becomes uh, sterilized, it becomes uh, cleaner, okay? So that you don't have any contaminants from the environment or any previous sample. After that, you put the tissue sample on the slide and spread it evenly, clear? So what you will do is, this is the scalpel blade from which you have prepared a slit skin smear. And then you just make a rotation out of it so that you make a very even thin uh, smear. So the smear has to be thin and it has to spread evenly. Then you allow the smear to dry at room temperature. Now this is important. You, you heat the slide first to sterilize it. But if you heat now, you will destroy the organism and it will lead to a false negative stain. Okay, you will kill the organism. There's no point. You make a evenly spread thin smear and allow it to dry at room temperature. Clear? Let's move forward. Now, when the slide is dry, you first add the first stain of zeal Nielsen, which is carbon fuchsin. Okay, you flood the slide. Flood means you put a lot of solution so that the entire slide gets covered. After that, you heat the slide with a gentle burner till only a light steam starts coming. Okay, so you will Start and heat it using a Bunsen burner. You will heat it with a Bunsen burner and not not uh, not any other burner or any other flame which is very powerful. You use a light flame so that you do not overheat the stain. If the uh, if the stain starts to boil, if carbon fuel starts to boil, it might kill the organism and you will not have a good stain. So just a light steam should start coming. There should be no boiling. To prevent that, you just have to move, keep moving the burner underneath the slide so that you don't concentrate the heat at one area. 
When the steam starts coming, you leave the slide about 10 to 15 minutes with no more heating. You will just let it stay at it as is at room temperature and just wait for the slide to cool down naturally. Clear? Now, uh, there is another method to heat it, uh, another, sorry, another method to make a zillion and stain when you don't have a flame. So you take the sterile slide, you make the smear as you're supposed to make it, a thick even smear, and you flood the slide with carbon fixin. After flooding it, you leave it for at least 20 minutes. So in this method, you don't stain it, but you just keep it there for at least 20 minutes, allowing the stain to percolate inside the cell wall. Okay, heating enhances the penetration of the stain inside the cell wall. Remember, uh, a mycobacterium leprae cell wall is rich in lipids. So heating kind of melts the lipid and the stain goes inside. But if you don't have a heating apparatus, you can just leave it as it is for 20 minutes and the stain will slowly percolate inside. In my opinion, you leave it for at least half an hour for it to stain if you're not heating or if you're not steaming the slide. Clear? That is known as the cold method of carbon fixin staining. Let's move forward. After the stain has been readily taken up by the slide, you wash it in the running water. So the water has to be running. You wash in the running water and the water should fall on the finger, not the slide. If water falls on the slide, you might end up washing the smear. So when you're washing, you will just put, pour the water on the thumb or on the finger and allow the water to gently go forward and remove the excess stain. Okay, so only a few seconds are required for this. Let's move forward. Yeah. After the primary staining by carbon fixin, you will not now decolorize it. So decolorization will remove the stain from other structures. M. leprae will resist decolorization because of acid fastness. So you decolorize the slide with 1% hydrochloric acid in 70% acid alcohol and you do it only for 3 to 5 seconds, not more than that. Only 3 to 5 seconds, that is enough. If you do, uh, if you do go overboard and you decolorize a lot, M. lepre might or in more instances it will definitely release the stain. You need to only use it for 3 to 5 seconds, clear? Now, initially, 5% sulfuric acid, if you're using that solution, 70% acid alcohol, you leave it for 10 minutes, but you use hydrochloric acid, so make sure it is only 3 to 5 seconds. Clear? You clear about it? Do not over decolorize, otherwise there's no point of staining. You will report it as negative in a positive patient, that is wrong, okay? After, after you have decolorized, you wash the slide gently with running water. Remember, the water should fall on the thumb or on the fingers and the water should fall on the fingers not the slide clear now after you have washed the slide you will keep okay so after you have you have washed the slide gently and the water falling on the thumb you will flood the slide with methylene blue so here you can see that we are flooding the slide using methylene blue stain you will use 0.2 percent methylene blue for one minute now, in the older Jopling 5th edition, it mentions 1% methylene blue. So, if you are using a high concentration of methylene blue, you do it for about 10 seconds. That is all. Remember, counter stain is not to stain the organism. It is to stain everything else and the background. So, only 10 seconds are enough if you are using 1% methylene blue, like Jopling 5th edition says. But right now, we use 0.2% methylene blue for about a minute. After you have applied methylene blue, you will just wash the slide gently with running water as we have done previously. So as you, as you can see, you will wash it gently, the water falling on the thumb, so that it gently just removes all the stain. Let's move forward. No. After you have made the slide, you will put it on an incline on a blotting paper so that all the excess water is absorbed and then you will allow to uh, allow it to get dried at room temperature. Okay, just leave it as it is so that it dries at room temperature. You can use multiple slides for multiple samples from the patient, but always remember use different blades. Different blades for different slides sorry different sites 
so a blade for this year another blade for this year whatever sites you're doing it's a good idea to use multiple blades if you don't have multiple blades the book Joplin fifth edition mentions that you can heat the blade on a flame wait for it to cool at room temperature and then you may use again but if you can always use different blades for different sites even in the same patient or else you might contaminate the all different smears okay so after you have kept it for drying let's move forward now on examination yeah so you always examine the slide under 10x objective no uh, sorry 10x uh, eyepiece and 100x objective lens and if you are using 100x objective lens you use you need to use oil immersion so the slides are seen or examined under 100x objective lens clear so here we can see how we are using the microscope we are putting oil on the uh, sample, oil on the slide, and we are just examining the the image shows uh, 10x, but you eventually rotate and examine under 100x to look at the individual fields. Let's move forward. Now, these are some speeding recommendations, uh, other, another reading recommendations, but if you have gone through this short video, you will realize how to make a zinless staining and uh, my special thanks goes to the Ankur Rathor, Sonali and Poon Pragyat for uh, giving me access to the media that you see in this, vi in this uh, video lecture. And uh, thank you. It, this video will not have been possible without your help. So thank you for sending me those videos. It becomes easier for me to teach when you can see actually what is happening. So with that being said, again, a shameless plug, do consider becoming a Ruby member. We have different, more exclusive videos, more exclusive, detailed, longer videos for members. And uh, in that you have access, extra information and all the topics that we eventually handle in different lectures. I usually create polls so that I can find out what members would like to see. So with that being said, I will uh, request you to consider becoming a Ruby member. And if you can, do consider becoming a Sapphire member. That's a step above Ruby members. You have priority reply to comments, exclusive polls, and another priority for suggestions. And you can have same day or earlier access to videos. I put my first access goes to Sapphire members and then eventually to Ruby members. With that being said, I will conclude this short video on zinc Nielsen staining. Uh, I've gone in detail stepwise how to create a smear and stain it with zinc Nielsen staining. This video along with another video on, on how to prepare a slit skin smear. Uh, if you see both these videos together and I would request all the residents or all the other doctors who really want to stain it, do the stain yourself. Don't rely on microbiologists if you can. If you make the smear and you stain it yourself uh, immediately, you will get better results. And making a zeal instance staining, uh, stain slide is a very important aspect of resident training. We need to do at least gram staining, zeal instance, KOH, wet mount. We should know how to do it ourselves and examine them so that we can create a good remote reports. Okay. All the stains are observer dependent. Okay. They are staff dependent. So staff has to be trained. So what happens if you go to another location as another doctor and the staff is not trained? So you need to see those slide yourself. Okay. With that being said, I hope now you will make more zinc slides and there will be no issues. If you have any problems, do write in the comment section and I shall answer them. Any session queries or you can email me directly. With that being said, adios and bye-bye.